Good afternoon or good evening, depending on uh, where you're coming from. Uh, my name is Sachin. I'm one of the upcoming chief residents. Um, and all of us are here really excited that you guys are interested in our program and uh, happy that we're join you're joining us today. Um, so today we're going to talk about resident life. Um, I'm just going to give you a background on some of the culture and things that we like to do here, um, particularly outside of work. But that being said, if there are any questions that come up that are not related to this topic, um, definitely feel free to ask them. You can jump in at any time. And after we go through this quick PowerPoint, uh, we are going to uh, go into four breakout rooms and you can rotate through, meet different residents um, and ask whatever questions you have. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I think, you know, largely one of the best parts about the program here is really just the residents themselves. Um, we come from a very diverse background and each one of us uh, sort of brings something unique to the program. And, um, you know, sometimes people say like, well, what's the stereotypical resident here? Or what are you looking for? And I would say we really don't have that. Um, everyone has really diversified interests and talents. And that's probably one of my favorite parts of the program. And even after, you know, four years here, it's, it's still really awesome that I'm learning different things about new residents every day. And we just had our new intern class um, join us this week on Monday, um, and they're already off to a great start. Um, so we're really excited about all of them. Um, so, you know, what are some of the reasons that we like UCSF and, and would love for to have you guys come here? Um, number one is, you know, honestly, all, all of you guys are looking for excellent surgical training. And we really do get that here. Um, and we get to experience this in really multiple practice settings, including a VA hospital, we have a county safety net hospital, level one trauma center, um, outpatient surgery centers, um, tertiary academic centers, and even like abroad um, in limited resource settings in years that are not uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and being able to rotate at these different sites really gives you different insights and provides you with different perspectives and skills. And um, so that, you know, that's the first thing. I think the, the second most sort of strong thing about our program is the resident education. And I think all of us will say that uh, you know, and I've even had people who rotated here in the past who went on to other rotations and so the, the education they got here and the things they learned during their time here really set them up for success elsewhere. Um, and our, our didactics is honestly, our own, honestly some of the best in the country. And of course at UCSF, um, you know, there are tons of opportunities for research and collaboration. Um, our department um, in orthopedics has the leading uh, orthopedic department for research funding. Um, and really, you know, it's as much of research as you want to do, you can do it. We have people who graduate from this program with 40 publications and we have people who graduate with their minimum of one. And I really think that flexibility in research is really nice um, for those who have interest. And even if you don't, you still can learn um, at a huge academic center and get good training. Um, once again, unique to our program is the fact that we have a global rotation. Um, UCSF was actually the first program in the country to have a global rotation. And we have a international global orthopedic trauma institute. Um, and nearing a non COVID year, we have our fourth year residents going abroad to sites in Africa um, and other places across the country, South America as well. Um, and on top of all that, you can live in San Francisco. And that's probably one of the best parts um, as well is you know, after you know, residency is tough, you might do be on call overnight. Um, and to be able to wake up or go out in this beautiful city, which is basically the same weather all year long, uh, is just incredible. As I mentioned, you know, the, ed the resident education here is just is really top notch. And it's probably one of the big reasons why I picked this program. Um, we have a yearly anatomy course during the summer um, that is both faculty and resident led. And we take uh, part in cadaver dissections and a weekly classroom based didactic review on the same cadaver sections that we do. And every Wednesday morning from 6.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. is protected resident education time. And so that includes things like journal clubs. Like this morning, we had a spine journal club followed by grand rounds and then um, three hours of resident core education. And this happens on a weekly basis. Um, all of the education in the core uh, curriculum is led by faculty, not residents. Um, so it's not the residents teaching you and it's not on your burden to make PowerPoints for the education, which is really cool. And with the way our core curriculum is divided is we sort of divide it by each subspecialty. So for example, we'll do foot and ankle, core, then hand, and then spine, et cetera. And with each of those subsections, we get to do a skills lab. So, you know, these are some pictures from some of the skills labs. Um, you can see two residents casted on top. That was from the pediatric skill lab. You can see Dr. Zaid in the corner um, with a spatial frame from another pediatric skills lab. So 
um, it's really quite valuable to have these labs. And um, of all the places that I, I at least uh, rotated, we have the most access to our lab, um, which is really invaluable. Um, these are just more pictures from the intern skill sessions. These are intern class had just finished uh, putting in nails and tibias um, and getting to use drills and saw bones and putting X fixes on, um, which is a lot of fun. And you know the surgical training is really um, top notch. I mean, our attendings here do a really good job of providing sort of um, supervision and guidance while also at the same time allowing for graduated autonomy. Um, our trauma experience at San Francisco General Hospital, it's a level one trauma center. Um, and you know, they're, I think one of the cool things about this program is we have attendings who are teaching trauma courses or teaching courses in their area across the country, not just to residents, but to other attendings. Um, and they're the ones who are in the OR um, or you know, to teaching us in conference. Um, and really, you know, I think the nice thing is like, there really is a good progression of autonomy. You know, what I'm doing now at the end of my fourth year about to start chief year um, is really appropriate to where I'm at now uh, compared to when I was an intern. And um, the attendings really like thoroughly expect that. It's like the second you become a third year, it's like you, they automatically progress you to the next level um, and everyone really enjoys it. Um, and then as a senior resident, you may have opportunities, especially at the county hospital, to be teaching um, junior residents how to do cases as well. Um, we also have like outpatient surgery centers um, dedicated to sports, foot and ankle, hand, um, and we perform, perform like tons of really complex surgeries here as well, in addition to a lot of the bread and butter stuff. Um, this really is what we consider a uh, resident first program. Um, and, you know, like, for example, the trauma fellows, they come to RORs basically expecting that we're doing the case um, and they're in a teaching role. You know, many of these uh, photos here um, are from prior residents because um, we didn't have as many meetings this year because um, of COVID, but um, the, we have an annual research day here at UCSF with the UCSF Alumni Society. Um, our chief residents each year go to the academy meetings. So my class is really excited for that. Um, and but really the only research requirement is uh, that you have to have one paper submitted for publication. Um, but really most residents far exceed this um, with multiple people with publishing multiple um, uh, things a year. And we also have a research resident. Um, one of the residents each year takes an extra year dedicated to research. Our resident this year, Michael Davies, actually um, just won the American Orthopedic uh, Society of Sports Medicine's research award um, and has numerous grants um, I'm pretty sure over like himself totaling over a hundred grand um, as a resident. So, um, and these are just some of the brief uh, research accomplishments um, in the prior year. Um, and this is, these are some images from our global rotation. So, you know, as we said, uh, we have residents who get to go abroad um, and we have multiple sites that are well-established and really well integrated with the surgeons and physicians there. Um, the nice thing about the uh, rotations that we have is we have these long-standing relationships and um, everyone who's gone has really valued the experience. Um, you know, none of the current residents um, who are uh, still here um, really unfortunately were able to experience this because of the pandemic, um, but it's been a favorite rotation um, throughout. And, you know, we've been talking about all this and like there's multiple sites, we have multiple opportunities, but San Francisco, although it's a very big city in terms of its name and, and the things to do, it's, it's actually much smaller than you might think. Um, it's actually just seven by seven miles, um, so 49 square miles, um, and it's just barely big enough for some of our residents to actually run around in. <laughs> um, we have a lot of active runners and um, a lot of people who really enjoy all parts of the city, um, and it's not just in the city, but outside of the city. Um, as a sort of quote unquote big city, um, you know, essentially, uh, even though it's a big city, it's in a small area. So we do um, have a little bit of traffic. It's nowhere near as bad as LA or New York, um, but it is very frequent that residents will have a car here to travel amongst the sites. Um, but there's also an inter-campus shuttle. And uh, we have some residents that just use Lyft, um, Uber or Scoot, which is like a moped thing that um, they rent despite seeing all the motorcycle injuries at the hospital. Um, and uh, our department pays for our parking each year at these sites. If you do have a car, um, parking is reimbursed. Just five minutes before starting this talk, we got an email uh, listing our funds for the next year. So, you know, you can see um, on the left here, there's like beautiful sunrises and sunsets in the city. And that's kind of like that all year long. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of people run. Um, you can see pictures of multiple people running here. We have Jen O'Donnell, who's on the call um, in the middle here. 
Um, on the bottom left is our attending Dr. Wustrak, um, Marcus Lalo, who's a huge runner, and and many others. And it's really easy to go out on runs here because the weather is very predictable. Um, although it can get foggy sometimes in certain parts of the city, um, it really rarely rains here, um, which is really nice. And depending on what part of the city you're in, uh, the temperature can change a lot. Um, there's different microclimates here, but really any day of the year you can go outside and run. Um, and people in the program tend to be pretty active, I'd say, and a lot of people go cycling. Um, just north of the, of the city, there's a lot of trails to go hiking and cycling, um, as you can see here. Getting outside tends to be sort of a big theme for people here. Um, so there's a lot of people have engaged in water sports. We go surfing, you can go out on boats, um, fishing. Some people in the past used to go spear fishing on a routine basis. Um, and even though there's a lot of water, there's also snow just nearby. Um, Tahoe, uh, it says four to 12 hours. Um, I've never experienced 12 hours. It was three, about three and a half. Um, but you know, obviously if, if it's snowing and there's traffic, I'm sure it could get worse. About three and a half hours, um, at least when I went this, this uh, winter, Bear Valley is very close, Yosemite is very close. Um, and I'm not sure who this uh, person in the, the suit is in the bottom right, but um, there's lots of friendly people on the mountain too, I guess. And um, each year, you know, the residents, it's not just the residents who get outside, the faculty um, do as well. Dr. Bourbon in the upper left um, has traditionally hosted a Thanksgiving uh, uh, ultimate Frisbee game. Um, you know, we have resident gatherings in the park. We have a basketball game uh, against the attendings each year in March um, before March Madness. And the residents have won uh, at least the last four years um, without a question. Um, so we're very proud of that. <laughs> um, and then uh, lots of mountains, lots of rivers and uh, tons of fishing. We currently have numerous active fishers in the program um who and lots of people learning and they go on trips honestly way more frequently than i would even have thought um they're probably out fishing every other week if not more frequent than that so it's a really fun thing for them to do and lake tahoe as we mentioned is really close by in the summer it's a beautiful place to go and play in the water um, in the winter you can go snowboarding and skiing there and you wouldn't be in San Francisco without awesome food and especially wine. Uh, Napa Valley is about an hour and 15 minutes north of here. Sonoma is a little bit closer. Um, and there's tons and tons of great food options around the city, um, really um, of all types of cuisines and, and different ethnicities. That being said, you know, San Francisco is not uh, cheap. Okay, so it would be lying if I said this is a very cheap and easy and affordable place to live. Um, the average resident rent as of last year was $1,700 a month, um, and the UCSF um, housing uh, stipend we get, this is now increased, I think it's almost $1,200 now, um, is what you get sort of to help support that. So it does actually cover a lot of the cost of um, the rent. We also get $600 a year from San Francisco General Hospital. Um, when you move here, if you match here, UCSF gives you $1,800 to help move. And then um, we get parking paid for now. So even, no matter what the numbers are, it doesn't really matter because um, that's really funded for us. So, um, you know, the other costs that sort of come up, like obviously food is a little bit more expensive here, um, different costs sort of add up. But ultimately, I think all of us are living uh, reasonably well. And, and we all like, I've never really had any issues, anybody um, telling me they like we're out of money or anything like that. Everyone seems to be able to get out and have a good time. Um, and we do have many families uh, in the program um, and more are on the way, more babies are on the way. Um, you see pictures up here of Eric McDonald, Laura Moore, uh, Marcus, Lalo, Avinav, um, all with their kids here. Um, and we're excited that more are coming soon, um, as well as many dogs. Um, but really, you know, ultimately, um, the best part of this place, as I mentioned, is the residents. Um, and we really are a big, large team here. And I think everyone has a lot of fun together. Um, that's that's hopefully what you'll get to see if you have a chance to rotate with us or can hopefully pick up on um, during our breakout sessions today. So thank you for joining.